Be the change you want to see in the world. We've all heard this before, and some of us have even tried acting on it. I'm one of those people. And for a long time, the weight of this responsibility caused me a lot of stress, fear, and worry. But the truth, as I've now come to accept, is that most of us won't be able to directly make much of a difference in the world. And honestly, I don't think we really have to. As selfish as it sounds, we were never meant to worry about the whole world. After watching this video, which is where I got the idea for this video, I learned something that seems super obvious and logical now, but which I hadn't stopped to consider before. We're built based on our evolutionary history to care only about ourselves, our families, and our tribes in that order. This was all that mattered to us in our hunter-gatherer days. It's what provided us meaning and purpose. Notice that the entire world isn't on that list. We innately only desire to look out for those closest to us. As long as they're okay, we're okay. Because by looking out only for a small group of people that's directly connected to us, we can personally see the impact that we have on those around us. It's a purpose that's simultaneously challenging yet achievable, which is the balance needed to bring us a sense of satisfaction, flow, and fulfillment. The problem is, most of us no longer have a tribe. The WHO has officially declared loneliness a pressing global health threat. Yes, we're more connected than ever, but only superficially. More and more of us have increasingly less friends. A lot of us are distanced from our families, and we're going outside of our houses less and less because there's a lack of third places. As Naval says, we're living more and more atomized lives. Everything is being broken down to the individual. Because of Netflix, we don't go to the theaters anymore. Because of social media, we don't socialize in person anymore. Because of remote work, we don't go to work anymore. And because of the gig economy, it's no longer even necessary to have a team that you repeatedly collaborate with throughout time. We don't have tribes anymore in any sense of the word. Our paradigm of meaning has systematically been broken down. I think this is why so many of us feel lost, lonely, and purposeless. Because what served as our purpose for so long is no longer an option, or at least not an easy one. But the thing is, most of us feel the need to have a purpose. So, in the absence of one, we make one up. And if we no longer have ourselves, our families, or our tribes to worry about, then the next logical answer is to worry about the entire world. I think this is how we've come to believe that we have to solve all of the world's problems on our own. And we put immense pressure on ourselves to do so. But in the face of such a grandiose task, we'll probably never feel like we're doing enough. Remember how I mentioned that the trick to fulfillment and unlocking a flow state is in having just the right balance between challenge and achievability? Well, wanting to change the whole world is just a little too challenging. <laughs> And so we end up feeling inadequate and asking ourselves what the point is of trying so hard and maybe even of life itself. If you're watching this video, then I'm sure that you've gotten to this point once or many times before. So how do we fix this? I don't think the answer lies in trying harder, worrying more, or screaming louder. The solution is hidden in what I've already talked about, our evolutionary history. If for thousands of years we only cared about ourselves, our families, and our tribes, then this is the only thing that can renew our sense of meaning and purpose. The trick is to stop fighting or ignoring our nature and instead flow with it. You may have heard of this before, but we're a lot more fulfilled beings when we embrace our design and the design of the world and the universe instead of fighting against it. It's Wu Wei, the Taoist principle of embracing life as it comes instead of wasting your efforts trying to achieve only what you think is right, good, and desirable. We have to find a way to get back to being connected to and worrying about only a small group of people. Not in an exclusive clicky way, but just in a way that's more realistic and that allows you to have measurable impact that you can personally see. And we have to find a way to marry this pursuit with our technological advances. 
because destroying all smartphones, ending all social media, disrupting the gig economy, and villainizing technology would not only be impossible and silly, but it would also ultimately be fighting against the natural flow of how human society is unfolding. If we're to succeed, we have to find a way to make these two seemingly opposing forces compatible. The good news is that some real-world examples already exist. Some that I thought of are platforms like Meetup and Eventbrite, Zoom events and webinars, and Facebook groups. I tried thinking of more and even of some that don't already exist, but I actually found this to be pretty difficult. So I'd really be interested in knowing what ideas you guys had. How can we use technology to bring us emotionally and maybe even physically closer together and to reconstruct the sense of community that so many of us are in desperate need of? Because while the examples I gave are headed in the right direction, they're certainly far from perfect. If you like this video, then you might also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It touches on the importance of community and true belonging. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button, and if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them, and so that they can reach more people. As for right now though, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.